Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take the divergence of a vector field that includes sines and cosines, trigonometric functions. The process is the same. The divergence of f is equal to, and we can write it like this, which means it's the partial derivative with respect to x of the x component plus the partial derivative with respect to y of the y component of the vector field, whoop, not yet, equal to plus the partial derivative with respect to z of the z component of the vector field. All we have to do now is plug in what those are. So this becomes equal to the partial derivative with respect to x of the x component, which is the sine of y times z, plus the partial derivative with respect to y of the y component, which is the cosine of y times x, plus the partial derivative with respect to z of the z component, which is the sine of z squared. It's not the sine squared of z, it's the sine of z squared. Now, taking the partial derivative of this with respect to x, notice there's no x variables here, so this whole thing becomes a constant, so this becomes equal to zero, plus here, notice that we do have a y, and x becomes the constant, so the derivative of the cosine is the negative sign, so it would be plus the negative sine of yx times the derivative of the angle with respect to y, which simply becomes times x, and then here we have plus the sine of z squared, the derivative of the sine is the cosine, so that becomes plus the cosine of z squared, times the derivative of the angle, which is 2z. And simplifying that just a little bit, this becomes equal to minus x times the sine of yx, and then plus 2z times the cosine of z squared, and that then becomes the, di the divergence of this particular vector field. And that's how it's done.